I initially started this painting with a very vague idea that I wanted to draw Jacob at a window looking out and for it to be an interior shot in a pu some kind of pu public space. I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to be in the shot, but um, I'm always trying to push for a, a shot which can do some more storytelling. Here I'm playing around with different kinds of angles to try and get a sense of what's something that I'd be more comfortable in drawing. I like this one to begin with, but then I decided that the angle was too high if I wanted to draw something more into off and towards the different distance. I find that it's a lot easier for me if I start off drawing the figure and then sort of make the background fit in with how I'm drawing the figure. But of course this means that I need to have done a lot more live drawing and drawing backgrounds from reality in order to really understand how perspective works in reality. And this is something that I still need to work a lot more on. Whenever I draw people, I try and insert a lot of their personality into how they stand, their posture, and like their attitude. Here I'm just trying to figure out how exactly this wall um, looks and what kinds of things there's on it, like pipes and um, different levels and frames and such. You may notice that I actually don't make a separate line art layer for most of my drawings. I actually use the sketch directly um, and I just continue to modify that as I go along. I find it's, it's quite a freeing method of doing things since I can be very loose with my lines and I know that later I can just clean it up. And I, But I will still have that energy from when I first drew it. Here you can see me sort of using just very um, thick black lines to try and uh, figure out where facial features are and then using the eraser to work in the details afterwards. I find that this works pretty well um, when doing figures since you can sort of figure out how, what angle the face should be at first and then later make it look pretty. I find that if I always just make the eye completely black at this stage, it tends to give a sort of dead expression, so I like to use a slightly lighter grey to get the eye, to show that there's some kind of eye colour and then I can make the iris, uh, I can make the pupil a black. Now I start trying to figure out the background since I wanted to have an element of storytelling and have uh, my other character Jules inside a shop of some kind trying to buy something. So here I'm sort of figuring out where exactly the door to the shop should be and really just eyeballing it. Not the best way of doing things really but uh, I find it's quite organic and I like that. find it helps to draw my figures very scribbly at first to get the general pose before trying to make it look nice. That way I can be quite um, brutal with how it looks and make sure I get the pose correct before I start falling in love with how the figure stands or looks. I always like putting little small windows everywhere. I find that it, it makes a very interesting atmosphere you find that with a lot of um, older buildings, like in Hong Kong or perhaps British buildings, have these very small windows back before you that you were able to manufacture large panes of glass. So here, just trying to put some interesting visual elements and details to 
draw the eye around the image. Here I thought that I should probably put some kind of background outside the windows, but you'll see that I uh, eventually realized that I'll actually uh, do those in later with um, uh, large opaque greys and just lighter greys. So I erase them out. A nice doormat. Always important to have homely features. Trying to get a sense of the reflections in the tiling on the floor. Those are supposed to be some uh, brown or brownian tubes up in the top there, but they never end up becoming lights in the image. But they, I think they give a sort of interesting feel or look to them. And here I save the image for the first time. The good thing about drawing all of this on one layer is that it's very easy to just um, completely change something or to move an entire section of the image. Every now and then I like to duplicate it and just hide the older version just in case I want to go back to a previous version, but I generally don't. It's just a sort of safety net for me. Here I decided that for the windows, the inside should be rendered as black and things which are not on the um, inside plane should be uh, become white so that you can get a real sense of the 3D definition of the frames and the windows. There really should be more signs and just more signage in general, sort of advertising things or something like that. Like if this is some kind of marketplace or some kind of like mall or shopping center, then there really should be more of that. Here I start laying in the uh, gray values or gray tones. I just laid down a uh, somewhat medium gray and then I'm erasing the bits that are outside the window so that I can uh, make the things which are outside the window underneath this layer. Now I'm starting to separate the foreground from the background. I like to always make the foreground darker than the background, like unless it's a very specific kind of lighting situation I find that um, making the background areas a lighter value tends to be um, quite convincing. So here just suggesting that there are windows outside and uh, not really drawing them but just sort of having a, a nice light suggestion of them and also other buildings and uh, sort of a, a bit of a world outside but not really detailing too much since uh, it would be a waste of time and also uh, all that extra detail would distract from the main scene. Now just adjusting all the grey values so that I have a, a nice variety. Here I lighten the line art, the clipping layer on top, just to further separate the foreground from the background since it's rather strange if the, the background is coloured lighter yet the lines of it are still 100% black. I always try and keep my grey values relative to the area that they're inside, so um, even the values for Jacob's skin are actually still relatively dark, even though it's supposed to be his skin tone. Adding a bit of lighting inside the shop to give a sense of the lights on the roof shining down. adding some shadows and further definition to inside the foreground area. 
and I had an idea of perhaps having some white birds outside the window. Not exactly sure why, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Here I'm doing the window panes, so uh, since it's glass, it should slightly affect what's outside them. So I fill in all the window panes and then lower the opacity to give a sense that there is actually glass there. Now just darkening outside the window so that you can more clearly see what's out there. It's still trying to keep it very subtle since you don't want things which are so far away to have such high contrast. Now just trying to get in a bit of lighting into the background. I decided that the light source would be towards the left, so um, certain, certain areas would be in shadow, some would be lighter. Here's a little bit of shine coming from the shop and bouncing off the tiles gives a little bit of a wet feel. Here just adding a rim light onto the side of Jacob since he's right next to a window. Again just adding some rim light onto the edges of various various metal objects and things which would be receiving it from the light outside. Now I'm just doing a little bit of that bouncing reflective light in the background. Again, adding onto the tiles since they would be somewhat reflective. Just adjusting the lightness of the lines in the background so that it blends in more. Since the backgrounds tend to have uh, less contrast in tonal value than the foreground, so I need to try and bring those values closer together. Now trying to grunge up the environment a little bit more since I thought that it was a little bit too clean. So here just uh, further refining the piping pipes. This is actually on a layer directly on top of everything so I'm just painting directly on with a hard brush. In a lot of comics or manga especially you'll find that a lot of work goes into just grunging up the background with just a lot of little strokes and imperfections in walls and such. If you read Evangelion or just even something more like Naruto, you'll find that a lot of the backgrounds have a lot of this kind of technique going on. And even in real life, you'll find that there are like rust marks or just marks from water dripping down underneath objects if they've been there a long time. It makes a place feel more lived in and more real. But of course, if you're trying to make a very um, pristine city, it may not be such a good idea. But since this is more of a uh, dystopian or cyberpunk universe, it makes sense to do that. Adding some metal plating on the wall, which doesn't make total sense, so I get rid of some of it later. Just trying to add some visual interest onto the wall since it was just too too clean before. Just 
it's just doing logical things like adding shadows and grunge beneath objects where they would be and adding highlights and reflective lights on the left sides of objects, uh, left sides of the hard metal objects where they should be. Now, piping also generally doesn't lie directly flat on the, on the surface, so it tends to have a little bit of a shadow. Trying to work up a nice texture there, without drawing too much attention to it, since that's a risk that you always run when you try and add details and texture into backgrounds. You have to be careful about not distracting from whatever the main subject is. Here, adding some more reflective light coming from outside onto the uh, frames of the windows. You'll find that with older frames, uh, window frames, they have lots of ridges on the inside, so it, it looks very nice when you sort of do that. Here, I'm using a chalk brush with um, opacity set to uh, pen pressure, and just using that uh, with an eraser with the same kind of brush to sort of add and then remove texture just with a just 100% black with a layer straight on top so you see I I brush in some black and then I erase it and then I brush in more than I erase it and even though I almost erase all of it there's still a slight um, trace of it still left which makes it so it's not so pristine A lot of digital paintings um, have an issue with just looking too perfect, unlike the real world, so that's kind of what this whole process is for, it's to suggest details or to suggest dirt and grime, as opposed to actually having to draw every single grain of it. Here I do the same thing, but now with just 100% white, I lay a straight on top again. You're just brushing some on, brushing some, and erasing it. Trying to sort of normalize the uh, values uh, in the background so that you can still tell what's happening but um, make it so that the values are still relatively close to one another, not to distract from the foreground. Here, just adding some more uh, bounce light since it looks pretty. I go a little bit overboard in this picture so everything looks like it's slopping wet. But I like the looks. Whatever. Using white like this also helps uh, define objects since. Uh, if there's some kind of small imperfection or some kind of extra shape there, the sun or the, the light source may slightly pick it up so you see a slight hint of it. It means that you can suggest a lot more detail instead of having to manually draw it all. It also just looks pretty in general. Since at this stage I tend to not use that many different kinds of blending modes in terms of my layers, so I can very easily just color pick um, any color from within the picture and just paint with that without fear of it mucking up some kind of uh, underlying value. Here I'm going in and blocking in the window so that I can then add a sort of glow uh, coming through and have that nice light just sort of morph into the image. I made a copy of that before applying the Gaussian blur, so which was good since um, I end up not quite liking the first version of it. So here I'm going back and darkening uh, the outside of the of 
the building since you can't really see what's happening out there. So here I try to do the blur again and this time get a better result. I feel that you can't see the birds too well so I decided to try and add a little, little bit of black behind them or just a little bit of a darker grey behind them so that they pop out more since the birds are already 100% white and I can't make them any lighter. Here I'm just using a nice blurry brush to darken some of the values in the foreground. Try and make it contrast more with the outside. It's all about pushing that depth, trying to make the foreground more contrasty and the background less contrasty. And there we have it. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Or if you want to point something out, feel free to leave a comment. And have a great day.